Welcome back. This is Debbie Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener, and we are back looking at the Tahitian squash that we left off with the last time. And I was talking about how we have a nice big Tahitian squash. I'm going to see if I can get back there and see if we can get some video of that so you can see what it looks like. All right, I have climbed into the garden now. I'm into the section where it has the corn and the Tahitian squash. And I'm getting ready to show you the Tahitian squash, but I first wanted to show you the gold potatoes that I had planted from the bag of organic potatoes that I had picked up from Walmart in the organic section. These potatoes are absolutely beautiful. And we are beginning to bloom, which means we have potatoes setting under the ground right now. But I'm very, very happy with these. Very happy with how they have turned out to just be a bag of organic potatoes. Beautiful plants. And we will have some gold potatoes very soon. All right, and now I'm over into the corn. This was quite a feat to get over here. I keep pausing the video because I was climbing in and over. So now we're going to try to see if we can find that Tahitian squash. I think I see it there. And there it is. Now, this Tahitian squash is only about a week old on the plant, and you can see how big that it already is. Enormous. This is twice the size of a butternut already. And they're supposed to get about 30 pounds and turn into what looks like a butternut squash with a tan color. So right now you can see there are stripes on there. Those will change. You can see some of the yellowing on it because it will turn a more butternut looking type of squash. And you can see I also have some corn in there. I'm gonna need to check that and see if we've got some corn because that has dried off probably ready. And uh, absolutely gorgeous. And we've got some more Tahitian squash that is sitting right in there. So we've got more happening all over the place in here beautiful plants but take a really long time to get done about 110 days before they start setting fruit on them so just bear that in mind if you're wanting to plant these um, I will be doing them in a different section because they do get so large and uh, using a different type of squash to climb up around my uh, corn next season but these have been this is a modified three sisters with the Tahitian squash in here around my corn and they have done their job. They have kept the corn stable in all of the wind that we've had. We had 80 miles per hour wind one day. This happens a lot in Wyoming. And the Tahitian squash kept these corn from completely blowing over. And as you can see, my corn in the back, that was kind of smaller than the ones in the front because of the difference in light are catching up. All right, and now we're looking at the back side of the white pumpkin. I had three white pumpkin plants in here, and um, they're just getting enormous. Um, but they've, we've had some trouble getting some fruit set on these white pumpkins. Um, looks like we've got one going on there. Don't know if it got pollinated or not, but they've been having some trouble getting pollinated. Um, and it's just because they are in here without a whole lot of other light and... Um, just massive stuff going on with them. It looks like I've got some mold or growth going on on the one white pumpkin that I had. So that is sad. Probably did not get very well pollinated. So I'll need to pull that off and give it a toss because it's not going to do anything. It looks like I do have one white pumpkin that is back in here that will be making it look right there. Looks like a regular white pumpkin and does look like it got well pollinated. So that one is taking off and growing. So thankfully we'll get one at least. Um, waiting for the plant to do anything else. I see some more in here that are trying to set. Looks like that one did get pollinated. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't think that I'll be trying to get in there again because that was quite, quite a feat to try to get in there over top of the potatoes that are about three feet tall at this point and they're on top of a very large mound of soil because I didn't want to have to hoe them a whole lot so they're they're planted pretty deeply I kept covering them up when they started coming up so I wouldn't have to come in and do a, a lot of hoeing after they got set really well so 
that is pretty high for me to try to step over. Got in there, showed you the Tahitian squash. And loads of other stuff going on in here. Again, we're looking at the front side of the white pumpkin now. And beautiful plant, just not very prolific on trying to start um, pumpkins. And I've heard that same issue out of others, so that's not surprising. We do have some watermelon that are set. I did not get a chance to get those when I was in there. Um, that are getting pretty large now, about softball size. Probably a little bigger than that because that was the last check. Um, so we do have watermelon in here now. This is the Crimson Sweet Watermelon. So we shall see how they do in the end because they've got about another month before we start getting some really cold temperatures. Acorn squash is doing fantastic. Um, we've got loads of acorn squash that is set in there. So with some really nice big ones. Let me see if I can get a picture of one. Should be able to see that in there and the, behind the flowers. So some really big acorn squash in here. Corn. We've got corn going on everywhere. All of the stalks are producing sometimes two ears each. This is the peaches and cream corn. Um, so still waiting for it to get um, done. We did have a few of the early sun glow that were left over from the hailstorm in there. And those are the ones I need to get in there and harvest because they are done making corn. And that'll be why I'm going back to the early sun glow next season is because the peaches and cream just takes a little bit too long. I would have already had corn by now with the early sun glow and have been processing it and getting it out of the way. So I'm going to go back to the early sun glow or another early variety. Um, I do have some ambrosia on the way to try. And loads and loads and loads again of the Tahitian squash. This is on now the front side of the corn. It is wrapping all the way around. It goes up to where the acorn squash start right about there comes all the way around, goes in and amongst the corn. And then I have beans in here as well. I have long pole beans that are climbing all the way to the top of the corn. And they're not hindering it at all. So we got the three sisters going on. Corn is very, very happy. Just, oh, just a little slow on getting on. All right, and this is the poinsett cucumber here at the base of my lemon tree. Got the lemon tree here. Lots of branches on it, looking gorgeous. Of course, we've got spinach behind there and oregano and thyme and um, lavender and all kinds of stuff going on in here and some purple basil. And then we have the poinsett cucumber in here. We have loads of cucumbers hanging in here. Nice big ones. More coming on. You can see more cucumbers hanging in the other area. Just everywhere in this plant is cucumbers, still loads more coming on. So this plant is a very prolific, and this is the poinsett.